winter wonderland here. This morning I woke up to a fresh snowfall and it's about 5 p.m. maybe 5 30 right now and it's picking up again. It's pretty heavy. Originally my idea was going to be to do like a in the field shoot but it's just getting far too wet that I don't think I'll be able to set up and all that stuff and get what I'm shooting. But you can see behind me it's just absolutely beautiful. The lakes are really calm. The trees are beautiful and snowy, but it's a little bit too wet for shooting. I had a completely different idea for this video, but the snow has inspired me to think about something else that I want to talk about because very like us who live in these cold snowy countries, we're going to face this very soon, but we're dealing with a lot of white in our images. And white can be very, 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 very tricky. And it can really like distract you from an image, pull you away out of an image, all depending on where you place like your highlights and those brightest parts. It's really, really, really important, I think. And it goes along with composition and like composing your scene that you're very aware of the brightest parts in your image. So how I learned, like when I first started landscape photography, you know, you just, especially with a wide angle lens, you're often just trying to get the whole grand scene in because it's beautiful and it's epic and we all know that. But sometimes with clouds, especially in the sky, I notice that, you know, you'll have, if there's clouds, you will have dark bits of clouds and then you'll have the brighter parts of the clouds. And any time I see a cloud, a bright part of the cloud that is on the edge of the image or anywhere in the sky, or even in the bottom bits, if there's bright parts that that are, I don't know, say in the foliage or something, if it's too close to the edge, it will draw you out of the scene. So you basically have to shoot with intent with the bright parts and you compose around them. That's how I photograph now. I'm always, always kind of hunting for that brightest part of that image and then trying to compose around it. And I remember for years and years and years and years, um, as I was shooting and just learning this, I noticed that I would end up starting to Photoshop bits out of my sky that maybe were a bit too bright. And then I'd have to patch in like a darker part of the cloud and it really makes a difference. And I'm, like photographers love to use vignettes. So even when I'm using the vignette, like a vignette really gives you that nice darkness around the edge of the image. So it keeps you engaged into the frame. And when you start to really learn about the highlights and the whites, you can start to compose your whole scene around them and you get to actually choose like where the viewer's eye goes. So I, I do, I think moving forward, I'm going to make a few shorter videos like this where I just talk about one like important thing that I think goes along with composing. And today it's being aware of the whites and the brightest parts of the image and photograph with intent. And if you do, you know, you're out photographing and you can't really control that or it does happen and you notice that there's some white bits in the corners or something. I like to also send to a friend just in case for some reason I'm not seeing it. I'll send it over to a friend, have them scan and they'll usually pick up on it right away because they'll say, oh, you know, I'm kind of being led out of the scene. So very, 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 very important. Be aware of the whites and highlights. As you guys can see, this is why it's just, it's like picking up and getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And it keeps going across my face and like little chunks keep landing in my eye. It's really, really hard to record. I wanted to do an in the field shoot again, but it's just, this is not always going to happen. It's not realistic. But anyways, I am totally okay with that. And I think the next one, like the next little quick tip video, I want to talk about balance because that is very important. There's a lot more components to balance than what people think. Anyways, again, welcome to all the new subscribers. I do feel like we, could we, because we're a team, I do feel like we are picking up some momentum and the videos are being seen. And to be quite honest, it's all about the thumbnail and like the titles that you use. Because the content, of course the content improves as you, you know, you make videos, but what I've learned is it really truly is engaging people in with the thumbnails, but I find it really hard because I just want to be, you know, genuine and honest in the thumbnails. But I know a lot of people use the thumbnail as like, 
you know, they'll trick you to get in and watch the video. So I'm learning how to balance that by, you know, having thumbnails that, you know, get your attention, but still remain authentic to the video. I wish I would have known this two years ago or even just thought of this. I don't know. It was just like all of a sudden it just clicked. Oh, my thumbnails. I need to name them differently. But anyways, that I do believe that that is why we are picking up some momentum here. And I'm really excited that this is happening next week. I'm actually going to Iceland, so I'll be there filming. I actually hope to film like a behind the scenes of what it's like to work on a big tour because I will be working on a big tour. I think that would be really, really cool to see. So if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments and I will be sure to get a lot of footage while I am over there. Anyways, as always, I'm going to share some images at the end of the video, probably some autumn images since winter is here, autumn is over. So we need to say farewell to all the beautiful yellows and oranges. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.